Okay, let's just go through and make one pass at this and see what it looks like. So I'm going to go up here and try and bring in all the extension of the hair here in the image. Now notice I'm trying not to go down into the areas that have already been selected in this project. So I'm not trying to go back in too far into the hair. I'm trying to stay on the outer regions here as I process this. If I go too far in, I can start to create areas of transition where it should be opaque hair and it can cause trouble. Let's bring our brush size down a bit and let's add in this additional area here on the left and maybe some more detail here on the right. Let's scroll around and let's make sure I have every bit of strand of hair here selected just like this. So I'm going to take my first pass and try and get this looking pretty good. Okay, now let's go back in for a second pass and clean this up because this is really a difficult project. Holding on to my Option or Alt key, I can now go back in between these strands of hair and start to recalculate the areas of transition. So I'm telling it to not include these areas, for example, here on the left, as part of the areas of transition. And I'm going to clean up this side just like this because I see some noise coming in there. I can go in and change my brush size, for example, to get down into some of these more difficult areas. But I, in general, I want to go through and start to clean up areas where I've gone too far. Now also notice here I see a little bit of softness in this area. Let me do a little experiment and see if I subtract from that area and see if I get an improvement. Yes, in fact, I am getting an improvement. I went a little bit too far into that area, but of course I might have to go back and forth between this Option and Alt key combination to extend my image out to get my best results, as you can see here. Now that looks pretty good. Let's take a look at the mask itself because that's really helpful in a project like this. The letter K on my keyboard lets me see the mask. Wow, that's looking really nice. It's a little bit fuzzy up here at the top. Let's go in with a smaller brush and do a little bit more refinement. I see a little bit of the window coming in here in the background. Let's deselect that. Let's try and add a little bit more detail to the hair here. And there's a little bit of noise over here that we can clean up. So it's the combination of seeing the layered version and then switching to this black and white view of the actual mask that lets you create your best quality results. This is looking pretty good. Okay, let's go back to our layered view with the letter L and let's move to the next step. And it's right down here. It's the decontaminate colors right here. This is a great new feature. It lets you extend the color of the hair into the background to extend it out to give you much softer detail. So clicking on decontaminate colors right here and then adjusting your amount to the right will then increase this. You know you want to experiment with this. Sometimes adding in the decontaminate colors can remove details that you may have wanted. And I saw a few details disappear that I didn't want to have disappear, so I'm not going to take this decontamination all the way over to the right. I prefer it right about here. Next is Shift Edge. I combine the decontamination with Shift Edge because I find that I may be able to extend the number of hairs. Check it out, check it out. I'm moving the Shift Edge to the right and I'm starting to extend the color out a bit farther into some of the fine details of the hair. That's looking great. I might finish this off with one more pass of cleaning up the edges of transition. I'm holding on the Option or Alt key and I'm cleaning up some of the noise out here near some of the strands of hair near the edge. I want to pull back on those areas of transition just like that. Wow! That is looking really, really nice. I just want to take one more look at the black and white mask. Yes, very, very nice. Let's go back to the L key so I can see the two combined together. So as you can see, what was a really difficult masking project 
has now been solved with this great refine edge panel combined with the new masking features found here in Photoshop CS5. And don't forget my two-step process. I first, I cleaned up the hand and the hard edges, and then I went in and worked on the soft edges of the hair. I find that workflow is really, really nice. Hey, and I just have to point something out. Notice over here, a really nice feature that's built into this whole processing is that it automatically creates a new layer for you. It duplicates the original. As you can see here at the top, it's made a copy of my original. There it is, some advanced, in fact, super advanced masking here inside of Photoshop CS5. Give these techniques a try.